Hey guys, my name's Matt, and I'll be the second floor the speaker. So, I don't know if Michael was misinformed, but our prompt was about publicly funded elections, not a union corporation donation cap. So, <coughs> bringing the focus back to public funded elections, um, or actually, let's talk about, you, you mentioned something about the First Amendment. So I'm assuming you're talking about the right to freedom of speech. But Joe Mandel, an associate professor of anthropology and sociology at Cogia University, said exactly that. Pu public financing does just the opposite. It allows for more political speech by a larger and more diverse group of candidates. In that sense, it enhances free speech by providing more individuals an opportunity to get their political message out to the public and perhaps be elected to office as a result. With the fair funding that public fund, with the fair funding that public financing represents, not only those who can call on wealthy special interests to fund their campaigns can speak, but anyone who is a serious candidate. Rather than limiting it, public financing broadens the political dialogue and in this way enhances democracy. Though the conservative members of the Supreme Court are attacking campaign finance reform, they have not been able to destroy public campaign financing because they believe it is consistent with the Constitution. So. What's beneficial about publicly financed elections? One, it increases voter confidence and participation. Thomas P. DiNapoli, a former New York Assemblyman, say that many believe the influence of big money in politics sometimes caused the elected officials to forget the best interests of their constituents, and that this is eroding voter confidence in the process. Next, a study made by Matthew Zagaja of Worcester Public Polytechnic Institute stated that for state legislative races, there was an increase of about 10% in the total number of voters in the races from 2004 to 2008, versus a 5% increase for voters in the top in the top of the ticket from 2004 to 2008. Now, while in absolute terms more people are were voting for the top of the ticket, which is natural for an election, the greater percentage increase indicates a greater willingness by some to vote for the bottom of the ticket in the past. Now lastly, Mimi Marziani and Adam Skids of the Brenner Center for Justice at New York University of Law, two Midwestern states with partial public financing, Minnesota and Wisconsin, <coughs> have also seen increased engagement with voters. One study by the Campaign Finance Institute found that in Minnesota, 57% of the funds were received from donors who gave $250 or less in 2010. In Wisconsin, 36% of funds were in this amount. Small donations in other Midwestern states that do not have public financing for legislative races, uh, some of which include Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio, fell between 3% and 12%. The same study concluded that if small donor matching programs were implemented in these states, a significant percentage of total candidate funds would come from small donors, with projections ranging from 61% to 72%. Instead of court courting an elite group of big donors, candidates instead would seek out small donations for the electorate at large. Next, publicly financed elections are beneficial to candidates as well as the people they represent. Ian Vandewalker, also of the Brennan Center for Justice, stated that they can spend less time fundraising and spend more time shaking hands with people in their districts who are actually going to vote for them. They can stop the cycle of representing people who want access and start representing the people they were elected to represent in the first place. And also, it takes a lot of time and energy for candidates to raise money. Officials elected with public funds say it's actually a relief not, not to owe favors to special interests. Moving on, publicly funded elections amplify the voice of everyday Americans. Mimi Marziani and Adam Skeds, who I mentioned earlier, said that small donor matching systems, which are incorporated into a publicly financed system, provide even greater incentives for grassroots fundraising, <coughs> particularly when smart, small donations are supercharged with a high matching ratio. Candidates must seek out a broad base of small donors, and new voters are drawn into the electoral process as a result. Political campaign also said that everyday Americans will have their small donor <coughs> contributions matched if they give to a congressional candidate who forgoes traditional PAC money and focuses on earnings broad based support for small dollar donors. That turns a $50 contribution into a $350 contribution, matched at a rate of six to one. <clears throat> now, one of these states that has implemented this process is Maine, and Andrew Bossy, reporter from Bill, BillMoyers.com, stated that finally, farmers, waitresses, and others who usually can't make their voice heard in politics were able to go to Maine State Capitol, Augusta, and represent their constituents free from the influence of special interest cash. <coughs>
Now, in, now similar to that, they allow candidates to spend time away from fundraising and spend more time discussing campaign issues. A national survey of candidates who ran for state legislatures in 2000 revealed that full public funding can freeze candidates from spending large times of money, or large spends of money of do sorry, <laughs> can free candidates from spending large amounts of time dialing for dollars or making personal appeals to prospective donors. Now Matthew Zagodrick, who I mentioned earlier, also stated that candidates uniformly felt that the system allowed them to spend less time fundraising. The system allowed candidates to send out a fundraising appeal to the supporters in the district and maybe hold or attend a couple functions in order to raise the qualifying contributions needed for a public grant. After they qualified, candidates did not need to continue dialing for dollars or hold fundraising events. Now one of the biggest reasons is that public finance, publicly financed campaigns allows competition between newcomers and incumbents, or people who are already in office. A study done by a postdoctoral associate at Yale concluded that public financing encourage, encourages experienced challengers within the incumbent party to run for open seats more often than they would without public financing. Hence, it would not only encourage more individuals to run, but it would also attract more highly qualified candidates. And also, a 2008 study done by the director of Yale Institution for Social and Policy Studies and a, for, and a Fordham University professor found that ratio advertisements, which mentioned both major party candidates and encouraged listeners to vote, <coughs> results in incumbents vote shares falling six to eight percentage points. By allowing challengers to get their names out in front of voters, public financing causes elections to become competitive, more competitive than they otherwise would be. And lastly, I'm going to assume that they're going to start talking about using taxpayer money to fund these public campaigns. Now many people are concerned with this, that they will raise taxes, but taxpayers actually save money if politicians are not funded by special interests in return for tax dollars, in, ta in return for tax breaks, special favors, and government bailouts. Only public financing can ensure that tax dollars are spent in the interests of all the people, not wasted in order to pay back campaign contributors. Lastly, it, it would mean that polit politicians would be working for all the people, not just those who fund their campaigns. Ten dollars a year seems little to pay in order... Oh, sorry. It is estimated that public <coughs> financing would cost less than ten dollars a year for each taxpayer in the United States. Now, ten dollars seems a little to pay in order to ensure a true democracy where everyone has an equal say in the votes casted by elected officials.